Hey everyone, this is Trace. Thanks for watching Test Tube Plus today. This is a show where we take a big topic, we break it into five different episodes, and we do this podcast style. So make sure you watch all of our episodes each week and subscribe so you get all of them. This week we are talking about the history of science. Super cool topic. We've talked about how science started and what it really is and people who have been fighting against it and for it throughout history. But what kind of science is some of my favorite to talk about, dark science, or, you know, bad science. Bad for us being, you know, the, the main baddies. So the worst science ever done, I guess. And this is debatable. There are a lot of different opinions on this, so make sure you tell us your favorite dark science in the comments. But in some cases, it's literally just bad science, like science that was done poorly. For example, the pesticide DDT. DDT was banned because it may have made the eggshells of bald eagles thinner. However, that science has been disputed. It did, in its banning, help rebound the bald eagle community because they were nearly extinct. However, DDT it might not actually do that to bald eagles. What it does do, however, is cause a variety of human health effects like reduced fertility, genital birth defects, breast cancer, diabetes, and damage to developing brains. All of those are proven. The problem there becomes that DDT, though bad for humans and maybe for bald eagles, is really good at killing mosquitoes and combating malaria. So it becomes a numbers game, which is where science traipses into this weird level of ethical problems. Science is not bad or good inherently. It's a question and answer system, right? It's a method. We've talked about this before. But when you have certain things in science, like you know that it causes bad effects for humans and again, maybe birds, but you can save lives using it, we end up using it. And DDT is still used today to help combat malaria in certain parts, especially in Africa. There's also problems in science with misinformation. While DDT might be bad, vaccines aren't. They're just not bad. And there's no connection to vaccines and autism. However, when a person who is famous enough comes out and says that there might be a problem because their child has had this anecdotal experience that they can't prove by any external observation and people listen, then it becomes bad and it becomes this misinformation and the science is no longer settled. It's a scapegoat problem. There's also problems with fear of the unknown. We're humans, and if we don't know something, we're usually afraid of it, and that's where nuclear energy comes in. We've seen bad things happen a few times in history with nuclear energy done wrong or gone wrong, but in reality, nuclear energy saves lives, and it saves the environment, and the amount of nuclear waste that we have to store for the next 10,000 years might seem like a lot, but in comparison to the number of tons of carbon dioxide that we know we're putting out into the atmosphere every minute, it's not that much. The thing is, it's unknown and people get afraid of it. And you know, you can go on and on with this stuff. Global warming, fear of the unknown, lack of information, fear of science, all of those things come into play with global warming. And it's almost a problem that's so unfathomable that it makes people just shut down and they don't want to think about it. But that being said, there's also just bad science, like dangerous and scary and unethical science experiments, too. One of the most famous is the Milgram experiment. Stanley Milgram was a psychologist at Yale University, and he wanted to see if people could follow orders, or if they would, even if they were good people, if they would follow orders that were not ethical. So what he did is he put people in a room and he gave them a system of, uh, you know, like little switches and buttons and a microphone. They talked into the microphone to a person unseen in another room. What they did is they had an examiner tell people, okay, they have to get all the way through this test. And if they get the questions wrong, shock them by hitting these buttons. And every one they get wrong, increase the shock. Already kind of bad, right? And what happened is... It, they found that when people had someone standing over their shoulder telling them they must continue, even though the person in the other room was screaming in pain when they got the question wrong, these nice Midwestern people would keep shocking them. Now, 
The ethics of this experiment are questionable in a number of different ways, not to mention the PTSD of the person. But there was no person being shocked. It was actors, and they that's how they answer this. Was it ethical? It wasn't really, because you're hurting the person who's administering the shocks. And it was also used as a way to explain how Nazi middle management might have been innocent. That if some general was telling this colonel to kill these people, the colonel felt that they had to comply. This was a psychological experiment. They wanted to answer a question, and that question was, do people follow orders even if they don't want to? So while that question is a great question, and that science seems like a really interesting thing, the way that they did the experiment was, was not so great. Another experiment that was done was called the Well of Despair. This one was Harry Harlow, another psychologist. I don't know what's up with the psychologists, why they're the ones that do the bad stuff. But this was an animal experiment where they wanted to understand love and societies and bonding. It's a good question, trying to understand how we bond with our infants better. So what they did is they took rhesus monkeys and they took the baby away from the mother after they knew that the pair had bonded. They put the baby rhesus monkey into an isolation tank with a wireframe mother that had a, a baby bottle so that it could still eat. And they left them in there for a long time, weeks and weeks and weeks, with no interaction whatsoever with their mom or any other rhesus monkeys. And it turned out to cause psychosis for the monkeys left alone. And this was called the well of despair. They literally could not rejoin the social group when they were let out. And the experiment went on for so long that some of these rhesus monkeys lived in isolation for 15 years. It's crazy. And while they're not human, it's still, I don't, I don't know how you can not feel for them because they're alone and they're, they're hurt and they end up bonding with this wireframe monkey mother that they were calling the Iron Maidens because they had this kind of dark sense of humor about the whole thing. Again, though, the question wasn't bad. It was the way the question was attempted to be answered that was bad. This goes on and on. There are many, many examples of kind of darker, dark science or bad science. Animals have been taken apart and put back together in the name of science. A guy named uh, Vladimir Petrovich Demikov was an organ transplant scientist in the 1930s through the 50s. And he wanted to understand how organs fit into the human body and how you could take one out from one body and put it into another. So he took one dog's head, cut it off the dog, and transplanted it onto the back of the neck of another dog. The dog lived, uh, and it turned into this weird two-headed dog for a while. Uh, gross, terrible, definitely unethical, depending on how you think about it. But the question was valuable. Can you take something from one body and put it into another? Robert White in the 1970s, he transplanted a whole head from one monkey's body onto another monkey's body. It was obviously a quadriplegic. It couldn't connect to the spinal cord, but the blood vessels worked and the monkey's head was still alive and it's so creepy and you can see it on YouTube and ugh, it's awful. But today we're talking about doing whole body transplants, head transplants with humans. We're talking about doing this now. This was done, this, this monkey head problem was done in the 1970s. And then today, we get things that, again, the question is valid, but the science might not be great. CRISPR, which we've talked about on Test Tube Plus before. Make sure you check out our episodes on genes. Super cool. But CRISPR is a way to modify DNA. It's essentially like a retrovirus. They program the virus to swap out a bit of DNA and they can modify genes. And it's really, really easy. And in fact, it is so easy that some Chinese scientists, just to prove that they could, modified viable human embryos. They modded them. That's bad. That's completely unethical under scientific standards. But it was a proof of concept. And now we know that we can do it. What's the problem with modifying human embryos? You ask, I'll tell you. You're modifying it not just for that person who didn't get a say in it, but for every person that they may ever reproduce to. Every, every one of their offspring forever will have that modification. And that's a problem. But CRISPR itself isn't bad. It's just how we use it. And that's the problem with science is the danger is the faith in the scientific method, not the method itself. The method just answers questions. That's what it's for. And 
sometimes it doesn't come up with a good answer because the question wasn't asked right. And sometimes it does come up with an answer. You just don't want to know how they asked. Tomorrow, our last episode on Test Tube Plus for this series on the history of science. We're going to talk about whether science ruins things. It's going to be pretty interesting. So make sure you subscribe so that you can see that one. And also check out our earlier episodes this week on the history of science and how we got to this place. It's really exciting. I'm Trace. Thanks for watching Test Tube Plus. I'll see you tomorrow.